Bullet is a real-time shoot-em-up puzzle board game that was designed by Joshua Van Lanningham and published by Level 99 Games in 2021. There are two core boxes, Bullet Heart and Bullet Star, that come with all the bullets, tiles, and bags that you need to play the game. They each have eight different heroines and bosses, and Heart is generally considered the simpler one to start with. There's also an expansion available, Bullet Orange, that has four new heroines and bosses, but you need one of the core boxes to play it. The core boxes both come with cardboard tokens for the bullets, but there's a deluxe token pack available that upgrades them to chunky wooden tokens. I'll be using the deluxe tokens in this video because they're super cool. In Bullet, players play through a series of three minute timed rounds with everyone playing simultaneously. During a round, players are pulling bullets from their bag and placing it on their sight board. When you pull a bullet, the color indicates which column it goes in and the number indicates how far down, skipping over bullets already placed in that column. If a bullet ever reaches the last row, then it slides over and damages you. To avoid this, you can spend action points to move bullets around and use pattern cards to clear bullets from your sight. Cleared bullets go to the player on your left and will have to be cleared the next round. Once the three minutes are up and everyone has placed all the bullets in their bag, you draw new pattern cards, get all your action points back, and refill your bag with the bullets sent to you by the player on your right. You'll also add new bullets from the center bag and each round this number increases. Once you cover your last health space with a bullet, you are out of the game and the last person standing is the winner. To set up the game, everyone chooses a heroine and takes their corresponding pattern cards, heroine board, and action board. Place the sight board in front of you with the heroine board to the left and the action board to the right. Take an AP marker and place it on the top space of your action board. Shuffle up your pattern cards and draw up to your hand size, which is usually three. Cards in your hand don't need to be hidden, so you can just place them face up in front of you. Read your character's unique ability and follow any special setup instructions now, like placing Mariel's marker on the board or Sanka's two crosshair markers on the board. Next, put the intensity track in the middle of the table with the intensity marker on the first space. Shuffle up all the green power tiles and draw tiles equal to the number of players. Put all the bullets into the white center bag and mix them up. Give everyone a black bag and draw 10 bullets from the center and put them in your black bag without looking at them. Now you're ready to play. Bullet is played over a series of rounds with all players playing simultaneously. Set a timer for three minutes at the start of the round or load up a song from the bullet soundtrack which you can find on YouTube. During a round, you will draw bullets one by one from your personal bag, called your current, and place them on your sideboard. Bullets have a color and a number. The color indicates which column to place it and will be either red, blue, green, yellow, or pink. Notice that each color has a different symbol so it's colorblind friendly. The number indicates how many blank spaces down it goes in that column. So this green two goes in the green column two blank spaces down. Future bullets placed in that column will skip over bullets that are already there. So to place this green three bullet, you count one, skip over this one, two, and three to place it here. Bullets are numbered from one to four with half as many fours as the other numbers in each color. As your sight board fills up with bullets, you might pull one that gets placed in the last row, called your hitbox. That bullet will slide all the way to the left and damage you. If you still have life left, then you can continue placing bullets as normal, but if it covered your last life, then you are out of the game, so be careful. To avoid getting hit by bullets, you'll want to clear them from your sight with pattern cards. These cards show specific configurations of bullets that you need to achieve. Solid circles indicate spaces that must have a bullet, but it could be any color or number. Dotted circles indicate spaces that must be empty, with no bullet in it. This POW symbol shows which bullets you can clear if you match everything else on the pattern. So this escape velocity pattern needs two bullets with three spaces between them, and you'll clear bullets from the three spaces between them when you use it. Note that the bullets you clear aren't a requirement, so you can use this pattern if you only have two bullets between them, or even no bullets, but you might want to wait and place more from your bag to maximize the number of bullets you clear. Once you use a pattern card to clear bullets, you'll put it in your discard and you don't draw new patterns until the end of the round, so it's usually good to maximize each pattern. Pattern cards can also require specific colors, like Shooting Star, which needs a yellow bullet with another one below it to clear these three spaces. They can also specify numbers like Gravity Well, which needs a three with blank spaces to the left, right, and down to clear these three spaces. 
There are also equal signs, which mean the bullets have to be the same number. So Graviton Curtain needs two bullets that are one space apart and the same number. Then it will clear these three spaces below. It's also worth mentioning that clear spaces could be off the board since they are not a requirement. So for Shooting Star, which I showed earlier, you could have a yellow one here with a bullet underneath and use it to clear just this one bullet here. It doesn't matter that the other two clear spaces are off the board. Now when you clear bullets, you'll take them off the sideboard, flip them face down, and pass them to the player on your left. They won't do anything with them now, but they'll add them to their bag when the round is over. If you clear any bullets with a star on them, then you'll trigger all your star actions, which can be found on your action board with a star in the top left corner. Most of the heroines have this gain one AP ability, so every time you clear a star, you'll gain one action point. And if you clear multiple stars, then you'll gain one AP for each one. Some heroines have other star abilities, like Adelheid, who has to flip one of her bullets face down for every star she clears. So make sure you check your star abilities before you start the game. And remember that you are required to do them when you clear a star. They aren't optional. So now let's talk about using action points to move bullets around and drawing new action cards. Each heroine's action board lists a number of actions with a cost in the top left corner. Before you draw a bullet from the bag, you can use any of your actions as long as you have enough AP left to pay for it. Each round you go back to full AP, so don't worry about saving points for later. Use them or lose them. Most heroines have the two basic actions shown here. Spend one point to move any bullet left, right, or down one space and spend two points to draw another pattern card. You can use these multiple times, so to move this bullet down two, you just spend two points. Just remember that you can't move anything up with this ability, although some heroines have a different ability to do that, like Esper who can spend two points to move any bullet up one space. Also note that you can move through other bullets this way as long as you are using the same action multiple times to do it and you land in an empty space. So we could spend two AP to move this bullet to the right here, and we could even spend 3 AP to move this bullet down 2 and to the right 1 because we're using the same action multiple times. But you couldn't combine Esper's move up ability with her move left, right, or down ability to skip over this bullet and land here because they are two different abilities. You won't often need to skip over bullets, but it's an easy rule to forget and it can help you out of a tight spot sometimes. The last thing you can do in between placing bullets is use your power-ups. You'll gain these at the end of every round and you'll place them on one of the blank spaces of your action board. These are one-time use abilities, so when you use one, just take it off your board and flip it face down. Then carry out the action. Most of the power-up tiles are self-explanatory, like instantly gaining an AP or drawing a pattern card, but let me explain a couple trickier ones. Clearing has a very specific meaning and it means you check the bullet for a star and send it to the opponent on your left. So to clear a bullet from the center means to draw one bullet from the center white bag, check it for a star, and send it to your opponent. If it has a star, then you trigger all your star actions. Copy another power-up you have means copy the ability on any other green tile on your board. Clear a bullet in your sight means to take any bullet, check it for a star, and then give it to the player on your left. Put two bullets from your sight into the center means take any two bullets on your board, put them into the center white bag, but you're not clearing them. So you don't trigger any star actions and you don't give them to the player on your left. The timed three minute rounds are called the option phase on the reference card. And this phase ends when the three minutes are up and everyone's bag is empty. If you place all of your bullets, then feel free to continue spending action points and using pattern cards and power ups until you're satisfied. Then take one of the power up tiles from the middle of the table to signal you're done with the round. Place this power up on an empty space on your action board. If you don't have any blank spaces left, you can discard one from a previous round or discard the new one you just got. If the three minute timer goes off, then everyone still in the round has to stop using action points, patterns, and power-ups and pull the rest of the bullets in their bag one by one until it's empty. So be careful and try to finish before the three minutes are up. After everyone has placed all their bullets, then the end phase begins. Make sure everyone got a power-up tile in the order they finish the round. Then everyone draws patterns back up to their hand size, which is usually three. If you need to draw a pattern and your draw deck is empty, then shuffle up your your discard pile to form a new draw deck and continue drawing. If you have more patterns than your maximum hand size, then you need to discard down to your hand size now. Note that during the round, it's okay to have more patterns than your hand size, but if you end the round without using enough, then you have to discard. 
Finally, draw bullets from the center bag equal to the current intensity indicated on the intensity track and put them in your current bag without looking at them. Now it's time for the cleanup phase. Draw new power-ups equal to the number of players and put them in the center of the table. Next, increase the intensity track by one for the next round. If any players died during the previous round, then up the intensity by one extra per player that died. Take all bullets in your incoming area and place them into your current bag without looking at them. And finally, move your AP back up to the top of the track and start another three minute timer. Your heroine dies when you cover her last health space while placing bullets. Stop drawing bullets and wait for the end of the round. If there are two or more players left at the end of the round, then you are out and they will continue playing. Put all the bullets left in your bag back into the center, take all the bullets you cleared this round and put them back into the center too. Then take all the bullets in your incoming and pass them to the player on your left. Now that you are out of the game, the player to your right will pass all their cleared bullets to the player on your left, effectively skipping over you. If there is only one player left at the end of a given round, then they are declared the winner. If everyone left dies during the same round, then check how many bullets you have left in your bag and the player with the fewest bullets wins. In the rare case where all remaining players die during the same round and have the exact same number of bullets left in their bags, then you enter sudden death. All tied players put all the incoming bullets into their bags. Then they simultaneously pull bullets one at a time and place them on their board. You cannot take any other actions like using AP or clearing patterns. The first person to get hit by a bullet loses and the last person standing wins. If all players would get hit at the same time, then the game ends in a tie. So that's all the rules for the competitive free-for-all mode. But there's a couple other ways to play including score attack and boss battle mode. Score attack is a solo only mode where you try to last as many rounds as possible. Set up the game as normal but you won't need a timer or any of the power ups. Start with 10 bullets in your bag and when you clear bullets place them on the intensity track here. At the end of the round draw bullets from the center equal to the intensity plus the number of bullets you cleared. So in this case we draw 4 for intensity plus 6 for the bullets we cleared for a total of 10. Then increase the intensity intensity tracker by one and put all your cleared bullets back into the center. When you lose, your score is equal to the number of rounds you survived. The boss battle mode can be played solo or cooperatively with others. In this mode, heroines are trying to take down a boss by working together and breaking all of the boss's shields without dying. Each heroine has a boss on their flip side and a set of boss pattern cards. Choose a boss to play against and set out their boss board with the boss side of their action board next to it. Shuffle up the boss patterns, place the deck here, and flip one card face up and put it in the active pattern slot. Finally, put shield markers on each of their shield slots, leaving the top one blank. And don't forget to read your boss's special abilities shown down here. Each player sets up their area as normal, starting with 10 bullets in the bag. If you're playing with two or more players, then give each player three team actions to place on their action board. These actions can be used as normal as long as you can pay the AP, and they are permanent and not discarded after use. Gameplay alternates between the heroines and the boss. The heroines start and the option phase plays out the same way as normal except there is no timer and any bullets cleared are sent to the boss and placed faced up here. Once the heroines are done and have no bullets left in their bags, then they draw back up to their hand size, move their AP back to the top, and then it's time for the boss round. The boss round starts with each player seeing if they made the pattern shown on the current active pattern. If not, then you suffer the penalty listed at the bottom. If there are multiple active patterns, then the players choose the order to resolve them. Then you check to see if any shields were broken. The numbers above the current shield show how many are required based on the number of heroines alive at the start of the last heroine round. If you cleared less than the number required, then nothing happens and your cleared bullets carry over to the next round. But if you cleared enough to break the shield, then remove the shield token and see if you have enough to break the next shield with the remaining bullets. Continue breaking shields until you don't have enough and then put all bullets back to the center if you've broken at least one shield. This means bullets don't carry over from round to round unless you failed to break a shield at all. Next perform all of the effects on newly broken shields in order from top to bottom. Finally since there's no intensity track this number shows how many bullets each player puts into their bag for the next round. Use the last revealed number they aren't cumulative. Then draw a new pattern card and the heroines start their next round. If the boss pattern deck ever runs out then just shuffle all their patterns and form a new draw deck. The heroines win after breaking the boss's final shield and surviving all the revealed effects. But if all the heroines lose before that happens then the boss wins. 
All right, and that's how you play Bullet. This one really surprised me. I hadn't heard about it when it was originally on Kickstarter, but I watched a couple videos and it looked really unique, so I ordered it from level 99. I don't have a lot of real-time games, but my wife and I played a lot of Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo back in the day, so it immediately grabbed us. The core gameplay of pulling bullets from the bag is super simple to teach, but the real complexity lies in the different heroines, their special abilities, and unique pattern cards. Esfer is definitely the best one to start new players with, since she just gets a hand size of 4, but Adelheid is pretty easy too, and Mariel's good, but she doesn't have the usual action of moving bullets one space, so she can be trickier. I've mainly played the boss mode solo, and it feels more like a puzzle than the normal competitive mode. All the bosses feel completely different, just like the heroine, so there's a lot of variety here. Overall, this is my top new game this year. The games usually only last 15 minutes, so it's easy to just reset and play again. If you're interested in Bullet, I'll put a link to the Level 99 site where you can order it, but Amazon has Bullet Heart, so I'll link that too. For sleeves, I use KMC Hypermat Clears because they let you see the card back, so check that out if you habitually sleeve your games like I do. Also, I'd highly recommend the Deluxe Wooden Tokens. They're really great and chunky and feel good to play with, but if they're out of stock or you can't get them, you can always go with coin caps and I'll put the Amazon link for those below too. So that's it for me. Let me know in the comments what you think of Bullet. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to me on YouTube. If you want to check out more of my videos, then click the links on the screen and maybe you'll find a new game to play. And with that, Michael Skeleton is out.